Hello, in this video I will explain how to solve the inverse kinematic problem for robots with a spherical wrist, providing a closed form solution. The aims of the presentation are on the one hand to provide a closed form solution to the inverse kinematic problem. Therefore, we will study the case of kinematic decoupling when using spherical wrists that will allow us to solve the problem as a separate problem, one for positioning the, the wrist with the first three joints and then a second problem for orientating the tool with the last three joints. The inverse kinematic problem consists of providing the values for joint positions given a target reference frame, usually provided as a homogeneous transformation matrix T. Obviously, we will assume that we know all constructive parameters of the robot that will allow us to compute the end effector position and orientation so that the problem reduces to find the values for Q such that the end effector position and orientation are the same as the target ones. Robot manipulators typically have a spherical wrist like the one shown in the figure on the left. In this type of wrist, the three last axes intersect in a point known as the wrist point. On the other hand, collaborative robots implement a different type of wrist where axes B and C are separated by a distance. The first type of wrist will allow us to decouple the inverse kinematic problem so that, as I said before, the first three joints will be used to set the position of the wrist point, while the last three joints will be used to provide the proper orientation of the tool. The second type of wrist is more complex to solve and for this reason this is out of the scope of this video. Therefore, the kinematic decoupling appears when using a spherical wrist so that with joints Q4 and Q5 we can set where the tool must point, providing Q6 the orientation of the tool along such direction. The wrist point can be computed from the target position, in this case T underscore T, minus in the distance from the wrist to the end effector with the vector of the uh, tool orientation, which is uh, denoted here as ZT. Once the wrist point is known, we can compute the desired values for Q1, Q2, and Q3, as we will see, such as the robot can reach the, the desired uh, wrist position. Once these three values are known, then we can compute the orientation of the end effector by computing, uh, in this case, the, 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 the rotation matrix between the end effector and the reference frame 3. The first robot joint will allow us to point to the desired direction. And therefore, if we project the wrist point onto the xy plane, then we can get the required value for the joint 1. And as you can see, it's just simply an arc tangent of the y coordinate and the x coordinate of the wrist point. Now the problem can be seen as a coplanar robot problem, since the other two joints will be contained in the same plane, as highlighted in the figure on the right. The problem now is to find the values for Q2 and Q3 such as the wrist is separated the distance r in such plane. Therefore, considering the problem of the coplanar robot with R being the separation of the wrist point on PWZ minus L1, the height of the wrist point with respect to the first reference frame, then we can observe that the problem can be solved by decomposing the, ro the robot structure into several triangles. In the lower right angle triangle, the hypotenuse and the angle alpha can be computed from the values that we know so far. Also, the distance L5 from the upper right angle triangle can be computed from the distances of the parameters L3 and L4. In the end, there's a triangle in the middle from, formed by the sides L2, S and L5 that are all of them are known. So, once we know the size of that triangle, that, that means that we can use the cosine theorem to find out the values for any angle inside that triangle. 
In particular, we can compute the angle beta that, together with alpha, will provide the value for the joint Q2. Similarly, we can compute the values for angles gamma and phi from basic trigonometric relations. Once known, then we can compute the value for Q3 as indicated. A very common case is when the distance of the parameter L3 is zero, which simplifies the formula as indicated below. The Bernabit Hartenberg table shown is the one that relates all reference frame as indicated in the figure on the right. So the idea now is that if Q1 to Q3 are known, then we can compute the orientation of the third link, expressed with the matrix R03. Our goal now is to find out the values for Q4 to Q6 so that the symbolic expressions for the orientation of the end effector with respect to the third link matches with the target orientation. Therefore, if R03 is known and RT is a problem datum, then that means that we can also know the numeric values for the matrix R36, that is, the end effector with respect to the third link. And therefore, comparing such matrix with respect to the corresponding symbolic expressions will provide us the hints to get the values for the remainder of joints. So, we assume that the numerical values for the matrix R36 are known now, as well as also the symbolic expressions derived from the denebri hartenberg transformation. Indeed, as it can be seen, the value for joint 5 can be obtained from the arcsin of the element 33 of the rotation matrix as highlighted. If, the value, or if that value is 1 or minus 1, then we are in a singular configuration as a consequence of the well-known gimbal lock problem. In that case, Q5 will be 0 or pi, and the remainder of joints Q4 and Q6 will be linearly dependent, as we will see. However, in a general case, the values for joints 4 and 6 can be computed from the relations shapes of the elements of the third column and the third row as highlighted. As you can see, there's a common term in all these elements that can be cancelled out, which corresponds to the cosinus of the angle Q5. That it's only possible if this cosinus is different from zero. In the singular configuration with Q5 equal to zero or pi, then the symbolic expression is simplified to the point that both joints Q4 and Q6 appear with a linear relation. That means that there are infinite possible combinations that satisfy the equation, which implies that we need to solve or to provide sorry, an arbitrary value for one of the joints and then compute the, the remainder joint once we know uh, once we have provided the, the, the arbitrary value for the first one. In this video, I have explained how to solve the inverse kinematic problem for robots with spherical wrist, providing a closed form solution that can be applied to the vast majority of robot manipulators. Thank you very much.